Hey everyone, I'm Lorenzo and in this video I'm going to talk about all Iron Man games for the 360 and PS3. Iron Man the Titan game looks amazing and I have never seen better integrated flying controls on an Iron Man game. The controls are so well mapped and give you so much control and freedom, they are amazing. I have never imagined a game with such good flying controls. But is the game good? No, absolutely not. If the developers nailed two aspects, they missed other essential parts for a game to be good. Especially the gameplay. Even if you get some really amazing controls and some really nice visuals, the mission objectives are boring. They usually revolve around destroying stuff on the map. And even if you can accept that the mission objectives are repetitive, after doing only a few missions you are already fed up by them, no matter how good the controls are and how good the game looks. Why? Because you get pummeled by lots and lots of projectiles. And they are anticlimactic. They are just in the way of the fun. You can also redirect missiles if you time the button right, but by the sheer number of missiles that get thrown at you, you will eventually redirect one and you get 3 more hits as damage. 3 more missiles hit you. And another aspect in the game I didn't quite like was that you couldn't die. If you get your health low, you just reboot. That's about it. An aspect that could have been used as a nice strategy was ruined. See the icon in the top corner? You can select where most of the suit's energy can go. You can select it to go to your life support so that you lose less health, or you can put it into stronger melee attacks or stronger beams. Sounds like we are getting somewhere, right? Yeah, but the execution is terrible. The only one where you can actually feel that it has some effect is when you put it on life support. And the only real benefit of the life support feature is that you get less rebooting screens. Overall the game is a missed opportunity. If it had more varied and creative mission objectives and less annoying missiles, the game would have been a masterpiece for sure. And Iron Man 2 is a disgrace. After they almost had the perfect formula for an Iron Man game, what did developers do? Option 1. Let's improve what was wrong and make the sequel better. Or option 2. Let's butcher the previous game and make an even worse sequel. If you've chosen option 1, you live in a dream world I would like to live to. But no, they've chosen option 2. If the controls were amazing in the first one, here they are butchered. Nothing feels intuitive, the controls are clunky and horrible and they committed another crime. In this game you don't get only open levels, you know levels very fitting to Iron Man. No no no, they had to ruin the character by squeezing it into tiny corridors. And the combat is horrible too, it's nice that you get better and more melee moves and that you don't get pummeled by missiles anymore, but still. The game is horrible and boring. The gameplay feels mostly like you just have to hover around and lock on. The mission objectives are dull and overall the sequel makes the first game look like a masterpiece. I'm really sad that they never released an amazing Iron Man game. I know that it's hard to develop such a game but it's not impossible. Maybe someday we'll get one. I really hope so. Okay, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and terribly thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.